I think they, they, the, the state government uh, invalidated their lease or something to that effect. Right. That's right. right. There's a good example.
Okay, now the microphone's on. Let me just make sure this is here. Okay, everybody, let's look over here. Oh, I forget which button it was. Chalk, talk, talk, talk. Ah, uh, let me look here. Talking, talking, talking. Okay, yeah, good. Um, there we go. Let's look at some questions real quick. Hi, this is Melissa Haley. Um, I did want to say that I did struggle a bit with these past assignments. Um, I had some trouble with Unreal, like getting that to work, but I got that working. Um, I did struggle a lot with the materials, like making them and stuff. Um, I did my best to follow the videos, but um, I have like a big issue I have is like importing them into Unreal. Um, yeah, I, I took a screenshot because it's way too, way too slow for this, but this is what I have here. And it's like looking all glitchy and stuff. Uh, this is what it looks like, or what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, so I don't know how to. In okay, so what? What I want you to know here is that, um, yeah, we just we all want to strive for a higher level of specificity in our language when talking about this stuff. So anytime you're seeing things like this, where the pixels are stretched, this is almost always going to be some sort of UV issue, right? And this is the thing to the top level of, of reasoning and understanding here is that UVs are in the mesh. They are not in the material. Okay, so there's something that get you know what is what is a UV map? It's the thing that uh, assigns pixels to polygons. When you think about it, take a step back and think about it. That has to be packaged up with the mesh information, right? Because as you apply pixels to polygons, clearly we would want to do that differently for different meshes because they have different shapes and different surface areas and all those kind of things. Right. Whereas here, um, you know, so this kind of stuff, right? So we got this UV output here. Let's look. Now, this does look weird down here. So this is one you did over here. Let's look. Let's output it. The UV stuff is going to be in the mesh. Usually, this is a sign of UVs. But how can I tell it's not the UVs? It's baked into the texture here, which is weird. Let's see, what are you in? You're in Substance Sampler, and this is the SBSAR that you exported from Sampler? I mean, we don't know that. It might have gone to Substance Painter, and that got exported, which would explain how this got corrupted. When you have a chance, send me this substance sampler file to see if I get the same results when I export this. Let's see. But this is what I have here, and it's like looking all glitchy and stuff. Uh, this is what it looks like, or what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, so I don't know how to import it and get it looking like what it's supposed to look like. But that's what I was able to get in there. I didn't do anything else yet, but that's what I have so far. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I'm just struggling a bit with the materials and 
and real and stuff, but yeah, that's my progress for now. And thank you and goodbye. So let I mean, there's only five of us in the class. When we run into these kind of issues, try to send me the thing. Let me see. Is it in here? You might have put it in here, which is great. Here's Melissa's stuff. These are the asset files. This is the Oh, you might have it here, which is great. Let's see. Yeah, so when we see that kind of stretching, that usually is a sign that like the UV, they're like there's polygons. Essentially, why is it stretched like that? <clears throat> usually that polygon hasn't been included on the UV map. And so when it gets to that polygon, <clears throat> it just sort of repeats the same pixels across the entire surface of the polygon, giving you that kind of like stretched glitch smear look. Whereas here, why is this taking so long to open? <clears throat> There we go. All right, this is not that one. This is nice. And if we were to export this, which one? I just opened this. This is Fabric 2. And we'll call this. Call this Melissa Fabric. Remember, no spaces. Okay. I'm going to have to keep Unreal open. Let's see. Hopefully, it doesn't affect the stream too much. And if you're, you know, I, I'm trying to keep these things open to answer the questions, everything. But when you're working at home, if you're working on Unreal, try to just have Unreal open. It does use pretty much all of the resources of, the resources of your computer. It looks really good. And those two things are related, right? The fact that it's using so much of the resources plus um, not having both these things open at the same time. Let's see. I'll try to import some of the other ones that you brought in. There we go. All right, I'm going to make a new folder here just for these things. Student substances. There we go. And let me try to bring in some of the stuff that you've got here.
So we get that pop-up for each one. Cool, let me put these on the cube, right? You're like, man, is there a displacement on this thing? No, right? Not because I just threw it on the other thing where I had baked the displacement onto the mesh, right? So let's look at these on the cube, rather. And let's move some lights so we can see what we're doing. It's hard to tell if this is a seam or in the actual thing there. But you've got that. The example. This carpet, you did. That's a pretty small section of carpet. You might want it to be a little bit bigger than that. And then this one here. All of those worked well. And then the one I just exported, where you sent me the substance sampler file, which is here. There we go. Cool. All oh, that looks good. Let me see. Where did you not send me the one that's weird? <laughs> It was called painting. Oh, that one's not in here. Yeah, assuming you didn't deviate from the workflow, your workflow for these other ones seems correct. I'd be interested to know if there's anything else you did differently with the one that says painting from these that you have here. So yeah, um, if there's a tiny bit of this kind of, you know, grass or whatever, uh, plant-based stuff uh, in between rocks a little bit, I think that works with these. This is a lot here, and some of it's like really out of focus. I don't know if it got stretched while you were working on it. Um, but, uh, you know, when something gets, if it's very, very, very small pieces of grass, I think it probably works okay in a texture. But when you get sort of larger plant features like this, where there's, you know, this weed or something that's bigger, I don't think this works in a texture because it's going to be flattened and it's never going to look like it's coming out of the ground. We'd have to do that separately as like a plant mesh there. Oh, this one turned out nice, right? See, here we don't have one of those larger plant features.
the resolution on this one isn't great. This doesn't really hold up. You know, if you're going to tile it, maybe about this much, then we're okay. But much closer than that, and it really starts to get pixelated, right? If we see the difference between uh, over here and over there. Let's see. Are these coming in at a lower res? We should be able to grab. Let's look. Which one is this? This is Outdoor 1. I'll go to the Outdoor 1 substance graph. And then, you know, if I'm unhappy with the level of detail in the material, right? And you can, like, you really see it side by side right down here, right? This, this looks good. This does not, right? Um, we can try to say, hey, um, let's do 2048 by 2048 and I forget if we need to apply this okay no we don't need to apply it right so for totally procedural materials things that were or substances things that were designed maybe in substance designer where they're being designed procedurally then as you crank the resolution, you'll see a difference happening. But the, for the things created in Substance Sampler, they start by sampling a photograph. The photograph is not going to get higher res than whatever it is that you took, right? And so we see that this one sort of caps out at 1024. If I start stepping on it below 1024, you see it change immediately down here. Right? If I go down to 32, just to make my point, right, it immediately gets pretty chunky. And so the, in order to increase this anymore, you'd have to have a better source image down there. OK, but you got those through the process. That was pretty good. Send me the weird one, because all of these look fine. right? And again, so everybody knows, we got the if you want to change the substance itself, which is the thing that generates the textures that then generate the materials, right in our hierarchy of stuff here, at the top you have the substance. The substance makes the textures that then get you know, like automatically applied to the material that then goes on to the object, right? Um, so if you want to make changes to the actual resolution of the textures, you got to go the whole way up to the substance graph import here, which is one of the only things that I would be adjusting up here uh, for these ones. OK, that's not bad. Here's Kevin. OK, two things this week. Um, First, I could not for the life of me figure out how to add additional uh, materials to something. So in the showcase. OK, so for substances, once we install the substance plugin, right, which is up here under well, you need to go to the store first. Marketplace. Search for substance.
Yeah, you don't click the, this is a little bit confusing interface, don't click the um, magnifying glass just over here, substance. Anyways, you, those of you familiar with Unity, this is the same process. You know, for the ones that are <clears throat> provided by Epic, they are sort of in the plugins menu, whereas anything designed by a third party, in this case, the third party not being some dude, the third party being Adobe, which has made this plugin, you have to download it from here. Then, once you do that, it'll appear in your plugins menu. If you search for substance, and then you have to, there'll be buttons over here that say like download and install, okay? And then once you do that, it's a matter of just, um, you know, control space bar, and then dragging the SBA, SBSAR files into here. And also similar to Unity. Kevin, I know you know Unity. Uh, a lot of the things you can use your understanding of Unity as a starting point here. Um, again, any sort of asset, you can right click and create new from here, right? So if you just want a new material, not one, remember our hierarchy was substance, then texture, then material. Materials at the bottom, if you just want a new material, not the one that's connected to a substance, just material, material. And that makes a new material. Right? Here's a new material that could then be, you know, applied to something else. So, that, I mean, that's how we make new materials here. This video, or whatever you want to call it, <clears throat> I just. I added them one by one, and then I did the last one with the animation. Two. I mean, I think that's what you're asking. I mean, you, you clearly have one material here. Right, this one, when you export your Olympic, you want to just do the character with the clothing on it, not the, you know, parts along the way where you're modeling the clothing. Two. I, I just, I added them one by one, and then I did the last one with the animation. Two. If that was explained in the stream, in the uh, lecture, last week or not yeah, last week, week but the last yeah. lecture i want to be honest the, the quality, quality of that in, in terms, terms of, of like, like video, video was awful, awful. it might, might as well have been a slideshow slide so i don't know what was going on there um but i did what i could uh basically It's on what, what I can make out. out. So yeah. And remember, my you know, I almost always do it twice. You know, like we do it and then we do it again. So keep that in mind. But you know that. You've been doing this for a while now.
Let's see, do you import any of them? Oh, there's one, okay. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to record the import process. You could assign them to multiple meshes or something like that. That looks interesting. Okay, well, let me do it on mine. That'll be a little bit faster. I'm going to make another folder. We'll call this Kevin Substances. And these, these are some good substances. So we'll put them on a zip file or something so everybody can get to them. Where's the folder? Here we go. All right, so again, this pops up for each one. Cool, there we go. All right, so a showcase here, right? rather than just dragging each one in, you could have them all already in here. Right? For instance, if we had more of these, remember alt drag? Yeah, alt drag is gonna be our copy drag. And you can do the same thing just like um, in cinema, where like, you know, if you want more things, you can alt drag the copies you know, to sort of create more things quickly, like so. Right, and so we could look at all of them uh, at once sort of doing this. So here's Kevin's, he's got his brick wall. And a flannel. This one looks like the, you know, especially for a, a pattern like this, you would want to probably crop this kind of thing out so that, you know, we can have the wrinkling you want to have happen as a part of the mesh, not as a part of the texture. So that one's not really usable. I would I would do that one again. The denim's good because we don't have that kind of uh, discernible visual pattern there. Let me get that light further forward. There we go. Real time lighting looks so good. That is nice. Okay, yeah, the pattern there looks pretty good. What else we got? Some dirt. Again, the cropping for the tiling here, usually having some sort of feature like this close to the edge or going over the edge, right? These UV cubes are uh, one, um, one per per side. And so not having things like that at the edge where it repeats, or at least having it repeated. Uh, I'm not sure if you used the make tileable on this one, which this one definitely needs here. This doesn't look uh, immediately tileable.
and what else we got here? Rocks. That looks pretty good. I can't tell if this is a shadow over here. But that's a pretty good start for it. And then the example and this rug. Yeah. So definitely review the thing about in sampler, right? When we're using these sort of images to generate things, we want to, you know, most of the time be using the make tileable in order to, you know, make it something that's going to be able to repeat across the surface of something. Uh, and then this one, you know, it's just the, you know, could you fix this in Photoshop? Yeah, I would just fix it by taking a better picture. Stretch out the fabric so that it's uh, taut and straight, and then use that as your input for substance sampler. But that's a good start. I had a problem where um, two of my substances did not want to import into, into Unreal, um, and it was like a rock, um, a rock photo that I've taken, and sometimes it tells me it failed to re-import like it did import something, and then other times when I tried to drag something in, it would just, um, it would just give me the error message. Um, let me see if I drag in the grass texture. Yeah, and it gives me this message. So either it will tell me that it would fail to re-import or import, and I don't know why that's the case. Um, I did try this out with um some of the some of the substances already in Sampler, and then importing it into Unreal, and they all seem to work. Um, and for the community ones, there's some that work and then some that don't. So I'm not sure if this might be like a plugin thing or something wrong with the sampler file. And yeah, it seems to be a plugin thing. I found an Adobe thread yesterday where they said something about the plugin, and they were working with plugin version 5.3. And I know the one I just downloaded and have on this computer right now is 5.2. So, but when I went to download it again, it was still 5.2. I'll have to see if I can find out where 5.3 is, and then I'll. Um, it might be download it on like an Adobe site or something. I don't know. See if I can find the new version where they seem to be addressing this, but there's other people having the same issue. I think we might be able to work around it just by using the textures, but we'll and just like exporting it out um, in, into a SVSAR, if there might've been something that I might've done. Um, but yeah, I'm having trouble getting those other two substances into Unreal. that around, way around because again remember the SPSAR is a sort of convenience factor I think if we export the um, textures individually that would be one workaround for this let's make one more new folder down here There we go, and where's Emily's stuff? I'll import those, and let's look at this. Hello, I'll be showing my um, substances that I imported into Unreal, and then this is the corduroy photo that I took, um, and I imported it the photo into sampler and then run it into Unreal as a SPSAR. And then I took a photo of a plaid jacket and I um, used it for the pants. 
And then I have a carpet, a photo of a carpet that I took. Um, I feel like this one might need some adjusting because the well, it's kind of flat still. Um, and the white is very... Is that like a shag carpet? That's, that's another one where, you know, it's, it's especially the longer the shag, I'm not sure that's going to work as a, as a material, right? It, to, to make it look, you know, shaggy, like, because why? Because just like the weeds, there's quite a bit of like directional um, kind of extruded information in there, right? The, of the shag, right? It's not like a flat-ish thing. Um, and how would we do that with material? You would, you would uh, use displacement, right, to have it come up. But what else do we know about displacement, right? It, it, you're still just moving polygons that are there in order to get the individual strands of shag to look like something instead of being kind of mushed together on polygons. You would have to subdivide it like a crazy amount, right? Which would not be, none of that is like technically great. So this, you know, to do like a, like a, you know, high fidelity looking shag carpet, you'd have to use a whole different like approach, you know, some sort of like hair rendering system that was applied to the carpet or something like that. Um, it may not be super successful. I mean, if you didn't get too close to the shag carpet, this might be fine. But um, for something that's going to be, if you wanted to have it, you know, if you're going to be close to it, if it was going to be weak in the frame, it wouldn't be quite as, um, it wouldn't be great to do it as a material. The overwhelming color compared to the other ones because there is some um, pink and um, grays in the, the carpet. And for one of the ground uh, materials, I use, I took a photo outside of the ground and used that. So I like how this one came out. Yeah, this one looks really good. The ground here, this looks quite nice. I think you definitely, it looks like you got the make tileable here because I don't see any seams as this repeats, right? So Kevin, this is what I'm talking about here, right? I mean, it does repeat. You can see that this rock is here, right? So make tile ball doesn't mean it's not going to repeat it just means that where it repeats there's not going to be that clean seam line right it covers up that line um and so yeah that one looks really good it's well done emily and then i took a photo of a brick wall and then use that for one of the walls in the scene um there's two other um there's two other substances that i made uh, one of them was a rock, and the other was um, grass. The grass one I made with the firefly, but I was not able to get those two inside of the video. Now let's see if they do here. Okay, good. They're failing for me too. All right. Well, let's see what happens here, whether the same ones fail for me or not. Yeah, the grass one failed.
Okay, so here, right, you've got this picture of, you know, you made something out of a corduroy pattern. It's pretty, I, I, we'll see here. I mean, it's not bad, it doesn't line up quite right, but it's um, uh, fairly close up, right? So the scale here doesn't work, right? The, uh, this is way too big, given if this was gonna be a corduroy cube of some kind. Right. So, um, again, the resolution is what it is. When we're making substance sampler stuff from images, we can only really go as far as the initial image, right? So, if I came back here to the substance graph, and I were to bump this up, do we get any more detail over here? No. Right. If I bump it down, yeah, clearly. Right. So, essentially, this is just reevaluating the image as it exists and you know the image as it exists here now you know, if you did more procedural stuff in substance sampler this would be making more of a difference but it is what it is we need to increase the tiling and so let's do that that is going to be in the computer's a little slow here in the material, right? And if we look at that. Is, is that the material she created? What's that? Is that material something that she created? Yeah. Is that from the community also? No, these are all, all the ones that I had everybody turn in were the ones that they made using sampler. You would think they'd have better resolution? Um, either she stepped on the picture or cropped it down so oh, much, she she yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Okay. yeah, yeah. These are all ones that they made. Yeah. Okay, Bear, you can, yeah, you can hear me now. Okay, so double click on the material. In here, under tiling, the maybe not so great named UV amount, which is actually the uh, UV tiling. If we were to turn that up. We can repeat this now to where it looks like the proper scale for corduroy, but here we run into the problem because it isn't perfectly aligned, you know, like the corduroy pattern, we have a seam in it there. We'd have to go back to sampler to fix that, right? So when you have things that you're sampling that have these straight lines in them, you, you know, you need to um, fix that in sampler so that when it is, you know, when the tiling is increased over here, that it, it works in that instance, right? Whereas like the this one is dirt. If I were to look at this, and come over here to UV amount, and check the box to, to drag the slider. Right. Bec this is not a corduroy pattern, right? And I, I'm going to assume here that Emily used make it tileable, like we talked about. And so, it, though the pattern, if you crank up the, you know, this really high, you know, it looks like a. You can clearly see the repeating pattern. But if you find the sweet spot for this, at whatever scale you're trying to do, you know, again, I'm looking over here, not in the shader ball preview. You know, like this looks crappy, but over here, implemented at the scale in the scene, that looks good. Um, there. What, what would you do, <coughs> what UV selection would you do if you're, you're going to be applying this to pants, jacket, you know, to cloth? What, how would you map that? There's, there's no triplanar or? There is a triplanar, no, but no, you would, the, the clothing needs to be UV unwrapped. You need to unwrap it in cinema, uh -huh. right? Remember, the UVs are in the mesh. Triplanar is a workaround, which we can use for, you know, mostly for things that stay still, but for something, you know, anything important is almost always gonna need to be, you know, unwrapped. 
you know, so that it's you have control over the how the pixels are applied. Okay. We're just test right. There's no UVs in any of these things right now. Right. All I'm doing is just <coughs> turning up the tiling. That's all. Right. Cool. Those are good. The, like I said, the corduroy one didn't really work out, but the other ones do look good. And yeah, my I had the exact same ones fail, and so I think we can definitively say that it is the Hello. plugin is the issue so, there. Honestly, the only real issue I'm still having is with the exporting with my Alembic file and with my cloth. I like I've cashed the shirt like so many times and it could be the friction maybe that's why I don't like that. But no, also um every time I like import it into um Unreal, it is like it the pants doesn't show up. So I'm like, I don't know if that's like, do I have to save the Olympic file under um, like a whole fresh save and not replacing the old one? Or like, I'm like, because I'm still like, I don't understand why the pants aren't showing up. Because I'm like, I think I'm grabbing the whole thing. So I'm like, I don't, I'm definitely doing something wrong. I'm trying to figure out what it is or something. Let's see. That's slowing down quite a bit there. Yeah, when I scrub the video here, that's working. Why is VLC not playing your video? Let's try the other one. Let me see here. Yeah, it's on my end, Bear. It's not you. I think the video is good. I'm going to try something here with the video once. I'm going to restart the stream, everybody. <laughs> 